how, how about, about no makeup, makeup in the workplace? workplace? Why, Why, <laughs> Why should you wear makeup in the workplace? Uh, Isn't that sexually provocative? No. It's not? No. Well, what, what is it then? What's, What's the purpose of makeup? makeup? Some people would, would like, like to just put on makeup. makeup Why? <laughs> to, to, I don't know. Why, why, why do you make, make your lips red? red? Because, because they, they turn, turn red during sexual arousal. That's, that's why. why. Why do you, you put rouge on your cheeks? cheeks? Same, Same reason. reason. It's a your argument. I'm not saying that you shouldn't wear makeup. No, no, I'm not saying that. But you're saying that. That I'm saying when women put on makeup, makeup in the workplace, that they, they have sexualized themselves in a way. That's, that's what, what makeup's for. That would, Jesus, that's that self-evident. Self that Why else wouldn't would you wear it? That, 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 when when put and there you go, right? So that basically gives some context from what I think about this whole issue. And I think he goes on to talk about high heels and why, you know, the purpose of high heels in the first place, you know, to accentuate the whatever, the arsenal, that sort of malarkey or posture. So there is a there is a side of it. There is a side of it. I, I completely understand and appreciate where Aisha, Aisha Curry is coming from. There is a side of it where I think most women would, would admit, if they were able to be honest, that they do get sometimes you know they do get overly doled up and dressed up for their friends you know for to feel you know for self-assurance and to feel pretty themselves all that malarkey but also part of it is to look hot right you want to look cute you want to look pretty you want guys to say something or to give you kind of some kind of attention some kind of um i wouldn't say it's validation but you know just to acknowledge that wow you look incredible right so there's a guy out there who's attracted to women you're attracted to dudes and he's just commenting with his eyes or with the way he looks at you or something that, wow, you look really good, right? And that kind of gives you a little bit of a pep in your walk, in your step, and you can carry on with your day. No harm done. So I can't imagine with somebody like an Aisha Curry being married to a Steph Curry, you know, um, NBA players in America are, you know, it seems like are the number one ticket for some of these um, fats out there, right? They absolutely love and adore them. Hence that famous picture of that girl in, the st in a stadium licking, sucking her finger as Steph Curry is walking towards the bench. So there is obviously a side of um, of that culture that is a bit rampant where, you know, there are people, literally women kind of, you know, flying um, over the wall, you know, kind of similar to those whites <laughs> during Game of Thrones, right? They're actually hurling themselves over the wall in order to get in touch with, or to, in order to touch a basketball player. So I can imagine in her eyes, maybe she gets some kind of male attention, but I guess in relation to Steph Curry, it's probably pales in comparison, it's probably nowhere near as close as what he gets. So maybe she's kind of using the wrong um, mode of comparison because again he's kind of at that kind of apex of sexual attraction when it comes to the uh, the um, the industry that he works in but again I think he, she was getting killed online because she's supposedly she's kind of been very forthright about the way that she conducts herself in public she's um, she doesn't necessarily uh, wear a lot of skimpy clothes or show a bum on Instagram uh, she's quite homely she has her own cooking show um, her and Steph Curry have been together since I think they were 17 or some shit so she always promotes this image of being a, a fairly well a fairly even killed um down to earth young woman right um so people are f saying it's kind of rich coming from her that she's been promoting this image of like this per perfect housewife and that she doesn't understand what why thoughts do what thoughts do and now essentially she's kind of saying she wants the benefits or the riches no sorry the benefits or the fruits of what thoughts gets right because you know if you're an instagram thought for the most part you have pictures all over your instagram with your bum speak poking up in the back and your cleavage showing you, you're probably used to getting loads of creepy DMs from random dudes that you don't know. But if you're a girl that is quite modest in the way you dress and is, you know, a little bit, you've got your head screwed on, you're probably not getting the same amount of attention. And I think in general, as human beings, we're allowed to have, we're allowed to have two of those opinions at the same time. We're allowed to be conservative, modest, and not want to be, you know, sexually vulgar or explicit or let everyone know about what we're getting up to what, or let, let the world know about everything that's going on in our mind. And we're also allowed to have some privacy, right? You're allowed to have both. You're allowed to be like Cardi B and talk about everything that you, you know, talk openly about everything that's going on in your life on social media. But you're also allowed to sometimes say, you know what? No pictures of my child, please. You know what I mean? Leave us alone. Or we're going through some real relationship stuff. Let us mend it. They don't want to do it in the public eye, right? You're allowed to have two of two of those opinions in your head at the same time. I think sometimes, I don't know why it is with people online or just fans in general, we are so disingenuous to come to the... It's, it's, I'm not sure if it's fake or if it's real or we kind of suspend reality or if we put too much expectation on people that are of a certain celebrity status, but it seems if no one, no one tries to understand or maybe tries to relate with, say, like, you know what, she's got a point. Because I'm sure there's loads, loads of people out there, men and women, who have the same thinking, right? Have the same kind of ilk. I'm sure, I remember hearing actually a comedian say it, um, that their mother or grandmother told them, that they overheard their grandmother speaking to other older ladies 
and they were kind of reminiscing about the the age, what age, what age did they realize men stopped looking at them, right? Because I guess for all other years, especially in the Hollywood industry, most of these women are, you know, fairly attractive, maybe actresses, maybe, you know, whatever they may be, right? They work in the entertainment industry, so they look after themselves to a certain degree. They've always been the kind of a center of attention at parties. Men have always kind of wanted to get with them, right? They've, you've, they've always had, they've known that they've, they, they've known, they were, they were aware they were attractive since they were a kid, right? They always knew, maybe, maybe since they hit puberty. And it was quite fascinating to hear his comedian talk about hearing his grandmother speak about the age that she realized men stopped looking at her. And then it got me thinking too about, wow, man, these are the things as a guy you would never kind of, you know, think about because I don't, I don't know, as a dude, unless you're David Beckham, unless you're a fucking apex attractive dude, you don't necessarily, some dudes don't even know they're attractive. Some dudes don't necessarily, and again, we don't really place too much importance on our attractiveness, our prettiness, our, um, um, our ability to snap necks, right? To get looks, people to gasp. We don't necessarily put much of attention to it because it doesn't really happen to a dude unless you're, again, unless you're Jason Momoa, right? No one's going to be like, oh my God, look how hot he is. Like, it's not really a thing that happens. Um, but with a girl, it's probably something that does happen, right? You walk past a building site, guys are going to be whistling at you. You walk in a restaurant, certain dudes are going to be looking at you through the side at, right? You, you've always kind of got that visceral reaction from people. And I guess they must, it must be such a weird ego trip to suddenly not have that anymore and it just be radio silence, right? No one's looking at you whatsoever. You're just like, wow, I'm invisible. And imagine and then imagine imagine that happening when you're 60 or 70, cool. Natural process of life, your time has come, you know, you had your time. It's now time for a new generation. You're in a whole different way, playing anyway. If you're 70, 60 years old and you're still looking for dudes to look at you, you're probably, you know, you probably need to give your head a wobble. But imagine me the age that Aisha Curry is, right? I'm pretty sure she's probably under 30 or something along those kind of lines. And then you're suddenly starting to realize that the dudes don't look at you anymore. That must be a bit weird, right? You must have to, a lot of self-confidence issues popping in. There's nothing that your husband can really say to kind of help you in that regard. Because of course he loves you. That's why he's still there. That's why you've got a lovely family. That's why he goes out and, you know, shoots fucking three points, you know, game after game after game and the game in order to kind of make sure he provides for his family. So he doesn't mind. Right, he, he loves you for what you are, but you're like fuck. It's saying wrong with me, right? And all, and I guess the automatic thing for somebody like an Aisha Curry, I'm not saying about her in general, but I think for a person that would think that and you're fairly young would be like, I'm gonna work, I'm, I'm gonna start working out, I'm gonna start dressing better, I'm gonna start taking care of myself. But I guess you know Aisha Curry is married to a multi-millionaire man. She's got all the good clothes in the world. She's got the best access to the best makeup artist ever out there. Hair people, right? Like, and she still feels like she's not getting attention that she needs again i hope sympathy has sympathy for people i think you know again i have sympathy for her i think in general it's great that she was honest about it it's work about a tendency of women to get dressed up partly because they want to look pretty for other people just to acknowledge not to touch or anything i think that's the one deciding line when women say i'm only here to dance with my friends sometimes that is true right guys leave them alone but it's it's okay to be like that, man. It's okay to some you think you know what I I, I want to have people side in my DMs too. It's okay to have that feeling. Every girl, every girl should have that feeling, really, to be honest. Especially on social media. Especially on fucking social media, with the amount of flipping um, catfishes out there, right? And you're and you're an actually pretty girl who just decides not to always show her cleavage or to suck in your cheeks or to face tune your body, and suddenly no one's kind of sliding into your DMs. Not fair. Not fair. I feel for her.